I'm Beth from Sew Country and today's tutorial is for the latest pattern from K. Ascona Designs. This is the Heartbreaker. The Heartbreaker is going to come in two sizes. We're going to have the Heartbreaker that is going to be the size for crossbody or backpack and then we're going to have the little Heartbreaker which is more the size of a wristlet. For me, I just love, I thought it was a great quick sew and that heart shape, she did a wonderful design job designing the way it comes together because it's so smooth and it's not like there's not a lot of puckers and it just looks great I think so wonderful bag and when you open it up it does open up all the way no problems opening the zipper doesn't catch and you get a really nice opening on this bag so for this video I'm going to be breaking down these steps into four sections I'm going to have the first section be talking about the pattern pieces you need to create this bag. The second section is going to be talking about all the different types of materials and interfacings we can use so you can get the best shape and structure on your bag. The third section will be talking about constructing this bag and sewing it together. But the last section is going to be all about binding. This bag does use binding. And I know a lot of people don't like binding, but I want to give you all the tips and tricks that I use to get binding that is not perfect. I don't think anybody would be perfect because we're humans, we're not machines. But to get a really nice finish and one that you can feel comfortable with and not be stressed out over. I am going to have the link for the pattern in my description for this bag. So although I will be showing you all the steps, you will have to purchase the pattern in order to have the measurements and the pattern pieces so that you can complete this properly. In section one we're going to talk about all the pieces and materials things we're going to need to sew up this pattern. We are going to be sewing the wristlet size in this video. So the first thing I need is I'm going to need four of my heart shaped pieces. I'm going to need two exteriors and two interiors that's going to be a front and a back. You can see the front and the back on this bag. If you have a specific print, you can even have it centered here in the middle to kind of have it be the feature on your, um, on your wristlet. On mine, I'm choosing to use the same exterior and lining for my bag. So that is your front and back, exterior and interior. The next thing we we'll want to need is we'll have our bottom gusset. You're going to have both an exterior and interior bottom gusset. You're also going to have a piece of stabilizer that is going to be pretty firm. So this can be a Decaville Heavy, a Peltex, whatever you have that can definitely give some structure and support there in the bottom. Then we have our zipper gusset. We're going to have both an exterior and an interior piece for our zipper gusset. Two pieces there. We're also going to have our zipper that wraps around the entire portion of the bag. If you choose to do a pocket inside yours, you will need a piece of mesh and a piece of fold over elastic. Of course, you could hack this to make a slip pocket with just a regular material or a zipper pocket or whatever you want to do. You can, like in this one, I didn't have any pockets in it. So your choice on that. We will need a D-ring connector. That is going to be this piece right here. You will have a wristlet strap, again, cut to the measurement she gives and fold it as a piece of double fold bias tape. We will have our binding. I'm going to talk more about what width you will cut your binding later in the video as we decide what materials we're going to use and when we get to the part when we're talking about the binding itself. Hardware, we will need the zipper with the pull, but we will also need a D-ring and a swivel hook. I'm choosing to use a half of an inch, but if you don't have half inch, you could use three quarts, or you could even use um, a one inch if you want to. A couple other things I think are really important. I definitely use a stiletto a lot in this pattern. I use a lot of clips, so I like to use the little plastic clips for this one because they're a little stronger holding. And something that I use but is not required is I use this Beacon 3-in-1 glue. If you do not have this glue, you don't have to, but this, I will show you where I use it and how it helps me, but it does help me a lot in this pattern. 
This is everything we need to complete the wristlet. And so we're going to move in to talking about the interfacing we are using, depending on the materials you choose to use for your wristlet. So now that we have talked about the pieces you will need, I want to talk about the different materials you can use. I sew on a domestic machine, so my suggestions are going to be for domestic machines. If you sew on an industrial, just know that you can be choosing a little bit differently with your fabric choices and things. Up to this point, I have sewn three of these. I sewed one of these bags in all cotton woven. I sewed one in all vinyl. And then I sewed one with a quilted cotton woven and then a soft vinyl. This is not like a really hard vinyl uh, gusset. So on these options, honestly, my favorite was the cotton woven. The reason why is because when I was attaching this zipper gusset to this bag, I felt like the cotton woven was easier. It didn't slip. It didn't come apart. I didn't have as much trouble sewing it on. This was a personal preference. I felt like the structure was nice. I felt like I didn't have a lot of puckering around the edges, and it just was my favorite way to sew it but I typically prefer using cotton woven anyway. If you choose to use cotton woven like me, my suggestions are interface every piece first with a woven interfacing. This could be an SF-101 equivalent or whatever you choose to use. After that, I add a stabilizer of Decaville Light. I do keep that out of the seam allowance. I put a layer of Decaville Light and I cut it about a half of an inch out of the seam allowance on my front and back heart pieces and then also on the gusset piece. For the bottom gusset, I don't do that. I just put the woven interfacing and then I wait until the stipple we add that heavy interfacing. So that is how I do the woven. If you're going to make a woven bag, that's how I do it. If you're going to use a vinyl, here's some things that I did on this one. You can see the structure's good. It's a little floppy. I didn't put any interfacing at all on this one. So you definitely could add a layer of Decaville Light to your front, your back, and your gusset. You can see my gusset's a little smushy. It comes right back. It bounces back, and it holds good shape, but just so you know, that's what it looks like. This was a little trickier for me to sew for one reason. My vinyl was sticking to each other. So whenever I was attaching the gusset, the vinyl was tending to stick and so I'd want to try to pull it like with my stiletto if it was slipping or something. It would be hard for me to pull it. So it was just a little bit of a stickier sew for this vinyl. So this one was a really fun sew. I chose to quilt. So if you want to quilt this, what you would do is you would go ahead and take your front exterior and a front lining and sandwich a piece of foam in between. I used on this one, I went ahead and used usable foam and I put it on my heat press and fused it together and that made the quilting a lot easier. Fusible fleece would work well too. The structure on this one is just great. I mean, you can see that it's, it's really good, very firm. This one was easier to sew with a cotton and the vinyl because the problem I had with this one was not sticking but slipping and so I was able to manage that better. It was easier to manage under my machine. So those are the three options that I tried. I did not put Decaville Light in this one. The only one I use Decaville Light in is when I use all cotton woven. So this one was foam, this cotton woven is Decaville Light, and this was nothing. So those are some options for materials and interfacing. So you can choose which method works best for you and what you feel comfortable with. Know your machine. Know if you need to keep interfacing and stabilizers out of your seam allowance and know what kind of bag you want to sew. Let's go ahead and sew up our D-ring connector and our wristlet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just top stitch down the two long edges and then put my D-ring on this and I'll show you how we're going to add the D-ring onto this connector. Now after I've top stitched down both sides, I'm going to go ahead and slide on my D-ring. 
but I'm not going to do the traditional where we fold the raw ends together. Instead, I'm going to slide that D-ring up and I'm going to fold one edge to the middle and do the same for the other edge. So they will both meet in the middle and your D-ring will be up here at the top. Whenever I have this closed, you can put a piece of double-sided tape in there or you can do what I do. I use a little bit of glue in there because this is the way we will rivet it on or you could sew it on if you wanted to the very last step. So go ahead and take this D-ring connector, set it aside and we won't use it again till the end. For our wristlet strap, I do interface this with a cotton woven interfacing and I fold it the four times. If you wanted, you could use webbing. Now what I do is I slide it on, my swivel hook on, and then I open up my two ends. I'm going to match up these top edges here and clip them, folding them open and clipping all the sides. And while it's not a big deal because I could twist the D-ring, I mean the swivel hook, I like for it to be on the inside, but I could twist if I need to, but it's going to be on the inside. And I'm going to sew this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now that I have that sewn together, I'm going to refold it. So I'll open up my seam and get that four-way fold again going on. I will reclip that seam now. And I have my swivel hook on there and I'm going to sew the long edges on both sides just in a circle around each one. So top stitching to Now what I'm going to do now that I have those edges sewn is I'm going to find that seam and I'm going to nestle my swivel hook right below that or right above it I guess I should say. So there's my seam and here's where I'm nestling it. And then I'm just going to sew right across there so that this is secured. You could also rivet that in place if you wanted to do that instead. My wristless strap is done. I'm going to set it aside. I won't need it until the bag is complete. So now let's go ahead and pull out that piece of mesh if you're choosing to use it and your fold over elastic. When we look at our fold over elastic, one side will be shiny and the other will be kind of matte. This side, shiny side is going to be my exterior. It's going to be the right side. And you will also be able to tell that there is a kind of a line that you can fold on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fold this piece in half and then we're going to slip our mesh right inside. Once we slip our mesh inside, we will clip that in place and then we will top stitch. Mesh is stretchy and a fold over elastic is stretchy. So it is a little tricky to work with. You have to be careful and delicate. So I'm going to take this over the machine. I'm going to top stitch just an eighth of an inch if that away from this edge that I have clipped, not from the folded edge because I want to make sure that I catch the um, mesh in there properly. So go slow, use your stiletto if you need to and just take your time. So now I have the top edge of my mesh finished. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out one of my lining interior pieces. You can choose if you want it on the front or if you want it on the back and I'm just going to lay it across there. This doesn't even have to be measured so much. Of course, the pattern gives you all those instructions, but just so you know, you have a little bit of freedom there. I'm going to flatten it out because it's going to tend to want to fold where it is so stretchy. And I'm just going to put a couple of clips there at the top. I'm not going to worry about trimming anything down. I'm going to baste an eighth of an inch all the way around. And while I'm doing, while I'm having it in the machine, I'm going to be holding it flat so it doesn't wrinkle up. I'll go slow, make sure I backstitch well at the tops and get this attached. And then I will trim it to the proper shape.
Now I have this piece complete. What I can do now, since this is the only pocket I'm adding, I can go ahead and pull out one of my exterior pieces and I can go ahead and attach it. We want to put them wrong sides together and clip around the top. Then I'm going to baste an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch away around the perimeter of this shape. I can go ahead and do that with my other exterior lining piece because I'm not adding a pocket here. If you wanted to add a pocket, of course you could. You can hack this however you want. So I'm going to do that for both of my pieces to get my front and back pieces completed. I have my fronts and backs attached. So now these two are ready to go. I'm going to set them aside and go ahead and start working on my zipper gusset now. So now it is time to work on the zipper gusset. So go ahead and pull out your zipper gusset, your two bottom gusset pieces, and that um, heavy stabilizer piece, and the two zipper gusset panels. We're going to start with our exterior. So this piece is the piece I do have the Decaville light attached to. So if you have a directional print on your panel, you will pr have it orientated so that your zipper is on top. And for me, I'm going to have my zipper closing um, to the left of the back, so I'll have it actually pointing to the right. I'm going to clip my zipper tape, the raw edge, right to the top of this with the zipper pull closing to the right. With this bag, you can choose whichever way you want your zipper to close. Now that I have this clipped on, I'm just going to base this in place and then I will attach my lining. If you wanted to, the pattern does say you could use double sided tape and complete this step all at once. You would put a row of double sided tape there at the top and then just attach this as well and sew these both together with the seam allowance given in the pattern and so you don't have the two steps. Now remember, if your fabric is directional, you want to have it upside down here so when it flips over, it'll be the correct print. I now have my zipper tape basted right sides together with the zipper panel exterior. I'm going to go ahead now and take my lining piece. I'm going to line up the top edges and now sew this with the full seam allowance. You can see that I have the lining and the exterior sewn right sides together with my zipper sandwich in between. I'm going to flip and pull this down. And then I'm going to top stitch all along this folded edge an eighth of an inch away. Now if you feel like your fabrics are shifting, you can clip the bottoms together, but what I'm going to do is while I'm sewing, I'm just going to keep pulling and keep a watch on it and make sure that my the raw edge of my exterior and my lining are meeting. Okay, I have my zipper gusset top stitch and ready to go. Now before we add on the bottom gusset, stop and make for sure you do have a pull on your zipper tape. We don't want to forget that step. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take an exterior gusset. Right now currently you cannot tell a difference between my two because they are both just interfaced with um, a woven. I have not added anything else onto it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the short edge of my bottom gusset and line up with my zipper panel. What you're going to do now is you are going to sew your bottom gusset piece onto your zipper panel and you can just base this if you want and then add your lining. If you want to do like the pattern calls for with double sided tape, you can attach them both at the same time and sew just once. Now that I have the exterior basted on, right sides together, I'm going to put my lining the same way and it is going to be right sides together with my lining zipper gusset panel. At this point, I'm going to sew that short edge with the full seam allowance.
If you have any zipper overhang, you can trim it now. Now what you're going to do is you're going to have your gusset open, open this part, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these two pieces back and have my lining exterior, my lining and my exterior of the bottom gusset wrong sides together, and I'm just going to top stitch along this edge. I top stitch an eighth of an inch away on the exterior side. So now what I want to do is I want to make this into a loop. So I'm going to take this bottom gusset exterior and the exterior of my zipper panel and I'm going to put it together. I'm going to make sure that my lining bottom is out of the way. It is not going to be sewed on at this point. You can just put a clip there and I'm just going to base that in place. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and trim my zipper. And now my lining, I need to have it attached the same way I did my exterior. But it's going to be kind of hard to do it. So the best way to do it is to know that we've got to fold this gusset all up so that we can get over to that spot we need to be getting to. So it looks a little tricky. I'm going to show you again. So here's what you have, your exterior and the top of your zipper gusset. So we want this lining to end up over here so we can sew it together to make our gusset a loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this and roll it. And you want to kind of do it as tightly as you can so you can get plenty of clearance. So once I roll it up really tight, then I can get those two, the lining of the zipper gusset and the lining of the bottom panel together so that I can sew them with that full seam allowance to complete my loop. So I'm going to do that now. Now that I have that stitch, I'm just going to push that out and flip everything the right way. And then I'm going to top stitch on this side just like I did the other side. So I top stitch here. Now I'm going to top stitch here. Eighth of an inch away from that seam we just sewed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste right across here just an eighth of an inch to close up this. And then that's going to make the pocket where I'm going to slip in my stabilizer. I'm going to slip this in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch or baste, actually I should say, baste all around the perimeter of this bottom raw edge to secure everything together at one and to also close up this gap so my stabilizer cannot fall out. My gusset is complete. So now at this point in the bag, we have our um, exterior front and back attached to a lining and we have our zipper gusset complete. I went ahead and attached this because I wanted to show it to you and talk about it, but we're gonna go through all the steps of it. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull out my back. This is the back exterior, what I'm looking at right now. This is my back lining. I'm going to start sewing the gusset on the back first because I found this to be easiest. So what I do first is I use the pattern piece. Let's go ahead and take this all apart so we can look at it and talk about it. I use the pattern piece markings to make two marks on my heart. Since we're starting with the back first, we'll take that pattern piece and we'll have it flipped over onto our heart to make the markings that way. So we will take our pattern piece and we'll put, place it so the words are touching the fabric and we'll make our two marks. These marks is gonna be where this bottom gusset's gonna go. Now you can see I have my bottom gusset inside out so the exterior part is right here. That's what I'm gonna attach 
to the exterior of my heart. It's going to be right sides touching. So I'm going to go ahead and match up this mark and this mark, and then I'm going to clip around and get everything attached. So let's first make that first right there with the seam on that mark. Clip it. Go ahead and move it to the second seam on that mark and clip it. And now I'm going to clip the rest of the way around and then we'll talk once we get that done. Okay, now that I have the raw edges all clipped together, this is my lining, this is my exterior. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out that glue I talked about earlier. This is not a required step, it's just what makes it easier for me. I'm going to glue just like a within the seam allowance, so probably just about an eighth of an inch away, I'm going to glue this top curve together. I'm also going to glue this bottom curve. I'm not going to put a lot, just a little bit, just a, a drop or two to have that secure so whenever I'm basting this together, it's going to stay a little bit better for me. So let me go ahead and do that now. Now that I have those based in place, I'm going to keep the clips on just for about five minutes to let the glue kind of dry and stiffen up. Then what I'll do is, th this glue is like a permanent glue, but I'm still not going to pretend, I'm going to pretend like it's not permanent. So I'm going to keep my clips there, I'm not taking them off. And then what I want to do is I'm going to put the heart onto the bed of my machine. I'm going to start sewing. You look at your curve here. I'm going to start sewing right here. So this is the top of my heart. Here's the bottom. I'm going to start sewing on this side. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to baste an eighth of an inch around all the way around this heart. That is going to secure everything and get everything locked into place so that I don't have any more shifting when we go on to our next step. Whenever you're basting this on, you're going to be very careful. You're going to not move a clip until it's time. You're going to keep your stiletto handy. You're going to go slow. You're going to smash everything out of the way. If you see um, something like your gusset puckering, you'll use that stiletto to smash in the middle of that pucker to kind of separate it and spread it out so that we get everything nice and smooth. We will make sure that we keep that zipper gusset raw edge and the exterior raw edge together. So if they start shifting, we will stop and use our stiletto to push or pull it out. Okay, so now we have the zipper gusset just basted on. I just did an eighth of an inch away to get it attached. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out my binding. Like I was discussing, I wanted to talk, I wanted to wait until you've already decided what materials you're using for your bag before you talk about the width of the binding. I always cut my own binding. This is the only way I'm able to get a really nice finish with binding. Using pre-made bias tape, I never, I never get a good finish. So, I only use single fold bias tape. So, I cut my strip. The width of the strip is determined by the materials I'm using. So for this bag, look at how thin that is. I kept my Decaville Light out of my seam allowance, so really it's just a couple layers of woven cotton and woven interfacing. So I decided to cut my binding at one and three fourths. Even though this is a very thin bag, I wanted to also take into consideration the seam allowance. This seam allowance is a little bit bigger on this bag than some other bags. So because of that, if this was a quarter inch seam allowance, I would definitely go with a 1.25, a 1.5 width. But because this seam allowance is a little bit bigger, I went ahead and went and cut my width at 1.75. If I was using foam in this bag, I definitely would have had a two inch wide binding. So the next thing we do now that we've decided on the width of our binding, and I don't cut it on the bias. There's always a little bit of stretch in it, so I don't go anything else like that. The next thing I do is I'm going to go ahead and sit my bag down like this. 
I'm going to attach my binding this way. I know from previous experience, whenever I'm looking at the down part of the back of this bag, this seam is going to fold down. That's just the nature of the seam. So I care most about how this top edge looks. The edge you care about the most, that's the edge you're going to sew on last so you can make sure it's perfect. Another thing to keep in mind when sewing your binding is, or making your binding is that it's best to have your binding match your interior. This is best when you're binding on curves. If you're binding on straight ed edges, I definitely love to use contrast binding then. But when you're going around curves, especially if you're new to it, it's very tricky to have it perfect every time. As far as the length, I don't worry about cutting that. I will cut it as whenever we get to the end. And I do want to take the short edge and just fold a little bit, maybe a half of an inch or so, to where they are wrong sides together so that we have a finished edge right there. And just like how you basted your zipper gusset to your um, back panel, we're gonna again sew this binding on with the heart on the bed. So that's gonna make it a little bit easier. Now what we're gonna do this time is we are going to sew this binding on that same way starting right past that heart-shaped curve. This is going to give us the best chance of having binding going smoothly. When we start up here, it's a little bit trickier and we have more room, but this way I found it goes together a little bit easier. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and put that clip in place. We are going to clip this right sides together. If you are confused, practice folding it over and make sure that you have it the right way. It's very easy to have it clipped the wrong way, but your binding is right sides with your um, back panel. I'm not going to clip all the way around. I'm just going to put that one clip. I'm going to sew this this way with the bed there. So I'm not going to see my binding, but while I'm sewing, I'm going to occasionally check and make sure that the raw edges are lining up. And also, I want to make sure I sew with that full seam allowance this time. We don't want to, the, the first time we went around, we just did a basting stitch. So this stitch is important to get that full seam allowance while we're attaching this binding. So I'll take my clip out of the way. I make sure that raw edge is right there and then I'll slide it up to where I'm gonna get that full seam allowance. Go ahead and put my foot down and then I'm gonna take a couple stitches back and forth to get myself locked in there. And then what I'll do is I will just keep watching and adjusting. The main thing we want to do is make sure we keep that full seam allowance all around the perimeter of this gusset. We don't want to lose that because our shape will be wonky, but also that full seam allowance is really going to help give us a structure to this bag. I'm not pulling tight on any of this. There's no pulling or me tugging. I'm letting it kind of sit firmly though. It's going to not be so loose that it's floppy flattening everything down. I'm sorry if my arm's in the way. Now, you can see right here, we're almost to our end. I'm gonna sew past that end and then I'll trim it and finish the binding off the same way I started it. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll just come down here and make a cut. I'm not pulling it tight because I don't want it to shrink back up. And then I will just do another wrong side together press there and finish this binding. Okay, now your heart should look like this. What we do is we pull it up. I start on the straight edge. I'm going to leave these curvy spots for the last because they're the trickiest. I'm also going to leave my overlapping spots for the last. So I'm going to start here. I'm just going to fold that raw edge in. And then I'm going to fold it over. Now, I do not want to have to trim if I can avoid it. The good thing about single this single fold binding is that you do have a little more freedom in pulling things down. 
So that is one reason why I like it. Because if I start cutting this seam allowance, then I'm going to lose some of that structure that this binding, the, the bigger seam is going to give me. And I want that structure in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going around and I'm just going to get it to barely match, you know, pull over those stitches. Trickiest part, and I've just got mine all clipped around, but your trickiest part is going to be where you have that overlap. Now on this overlap part, sometimes you will have to trim down that seam just a little bit because there is some extra bulk there. Um, the peak goes together really quick, so no problems there, but what you're going to do now is you're going to sew it from this side. So we're still going to have that heart down. We're still going to do the same thing. You're going to use your stiletto so these pieces that aren't fully covering, you're going to pull them and push them while you're sewing to get them to cover that seam. So we are going to sew this binding an eighth of an inch away from this edge. And so I'm going to use my stiletto and just go slow and get started doing it. One other thing before I get started, I'm not going to, like here is where my overlap is. I'm going to start sewing below that so that if I have like where binding can have a little bit of stretch, if there's any stretch, I want to be able to tuck it in under that area. So don't start sewing um, right where your overlap is. Start sewing a little bit below where you overlapped and where your binding ends. Okay, my binding is sewn on the back of my heart, and I want to repeat this entire process for the front. Now, for the front of your heart, that's the one that I have the pocket attached to, you're going to make the same marks, but this time your pattern piece will be the right side up, so you'll be looking at the words. So I'm going to march up the, match up those marks first, and then I'll go ahead and sew this on. Okay, now that I have those two marks matched up, I'm going to go ahead and clip the rest of the way around this bag. And if you remember, we do what I do first is I go ahead and baste this on with the eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, I did find that it's easier to go ahead and clip while the zipper is closed, but to sew while the zipper is opened. I'm going to do the same thing and have it attached laying against my bed and sew the heart against the bed, sew it that way. Okay, I have everything clipped around. Now what I like to do is I do, I like to add a little bit of glue and on my zipper every time, I don't clip anything here, but what I do is I always find I have a little bit of an overhang. And so once I make sure everything's lined up, I just push it over just a little and overlap. And it's just not even maybe a sixteenth of an inch of overlap right there that I do. And that's how I do mine. Now the pattern I think does go into details about clipping. I don't clip. I just push those two together and it's, that's how I do mine. Okay, so let me glue. And then after the glue dries, I'm going to base this in place. So now that everything is clipped and glued, I'm going to start sewing again right past that curve. Okay, this is just the basting stitch and we're just going to baste around with an eighth of an inch to get everything attached. Okay, now that we have that basted on, I'm going to zip it back up just so I can attach my binding easily. Okay, make sure you fold that short edge over so that you have a finished edge here. We're going to be sewing the bag with the heart down. So we'll start, I don't want to start right there where that pocket is, that'll be a little bit more bulk and so I'm going to start a little bit below that. I'll just put the one clip there to hold that in place while I get everything situated. And now at this point, I'll go ahead and open. And remember, we're sewing with that full seam allowance when we add the binding to the bag.
Now it's time to sew this final row of stitches on and then our bag will be done besides attaching our D-ring. After I put it under the foot, I go ahead and put it down and I make sure I'm an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge so I can sew all around there where your zipper teeth are there. Do make sure that you don't go over them. Okay, the binding is now done on my front. Now I'm just going to open the bag, turn it the right way. You may need to press or straighten things out a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to push this binding up in that curve. It, wants, it needs to be the support system for this bag. So I finished my bag and so now what I need to do is I need to attach my D-ring to it. Now the pattern tells you where to attach the D-ring so I'm not going to show you where I measure up but I'm going to pull out the D-ring. So what you're going to do is you'll take your clips off. And like I said, I suggest either gluing or some double sided tape. You will use the measurement given in the pattern. I'm going to put mine on the left side. And I'm going to rivet mine into place right there in the middle on that left side. Mine's a little bit bigger than yours will be just because I want to do it that way so I can show you how to fold it for the video. So it'll be right there rivet in place. I'm not going to do that on camera. But that is my heart bag. This is the little heartbreaker from KS Gona Designs. My fabric is from JNR Edwards. My zipper tape and zipper pull are both from So Majestic. That's where I got the supplies. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're not intimidated about the binding. I do know that binding is a little stressful and can be a little nerve-wracking, but it is okay, and as long as you take your time and go slow, it'll be fine. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. I hope you have a great day sewing, and I hope to see your hearts in the Cascona Designs Facebook group also.